All right, it's officially recording. We're officially in this bitch, yo. How do you feel? You feel me? Exactly. Yeah, oh. man. I'm feeling on top of the world, man. That, that was that was that was amazing. Yeah, definitely feeling good, bro. Cannot complain at all, honestly. Yo, for those who don't know what you just stumbled upon, this is the first time I'm ever using. I want to say it right so I get the the uh, the partnership. Streamyard. It's my first time ever using Streamyard. You yeah, feel stream me? Yard. Oh, yeah. We here, you feel me? the stream yard, bro. We couldn't do it without stream yard. Exactly. I, don't, I wouldn't know how to do it without y'all. You feel me? Uh, yeah. I want the free pro, pro subscription. Send that my way. We can get a partnership going. You feel me? I need all the free stuff. Mm -hmm. Tap in with your boy. It's Don Kooji. This is another episode of Kicking It With Kooj. First time doing it virtual in a really long time. And I'm here with someone I'm a, genuinely a fan of. My yeah. favorite color. How are you, bro? Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for that amazing intro. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you uh i'm doing well bro i really can't complain uh the past few months have been really really fun like in all aspects like like i'm usually bored as shit so like shit's been like pretty entertaining um i keep on coming up with like pretty cool ideas and shit and yeah bro i just i have a battery in my back i haven't had in a while so yeah i've been super excited i've been high and shit eating good Yo, look at everything. Be, being high and shit is really important <laughs> to the creative development for sure I fuck with getting high, bro. So, yeah, like, yeah, that's been my whole thing, for real. That's just been about what I'm on. I've been going to concerts and shit. Went to a Soldier Boy show. That shit was How cool. was the Soldier Boy show? It was dope. He performed Bapes, and I pulled off my Bapes and was holding them in the air and shit. I ain't bring a Sharpie, but I feel like that nigga would have signed them if I did. Nah, he definitely would have signed it, for sure. He would have. He kept looking my direction. Nah, he knew what it was. He, he, was he could tell close. that, like. He inspired. He would you say he inspired the wave, Soldier Boy? He he. I want to say like he inspired the whole wave, but like not nah, how long. But but he definitely like. He, what's the shit called that the lifeguards throw out? You gotta like grab it, like if you're the, about to uh, die. The fucking. What do they throw? Oh. All right, we'll say that. Yeah, he ain't inspired a wave, but like he's he a threw the thing. He's a he's a lifeguard for sure. Like he's Hell definitely yeah. he's a lifeguard. If that makes sense. <laughs> like that he, makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, like without him, like there's some life that wouldn't be there for sure. Cause I'm, and he's the first to do a lot. He is 100% the first to do a lot. I'll always credit him. I'll never talk down on him, honestly. I think Soldier Boy's a legend. I absolutely think Soldier Boy's a legend. And I feel like I, when Versus was popping, I was like, he's going to kill a lot of niggas in the Versus for sure. He's like the king of ringtones. Definitely. One, one of, if not the king of the internet. Um, yeah, no, nah, Soldier Boy, his run is just insane. If you think about it, and just how young he was, and how early he was on the whole producer rapper thing. That that nigga, was, that nigga was making songs on FL like before you could save your sessions and shit. Like he he's a different nigga, bro. Like he had and, a shit on LimeWire. Like, you don't get it. I was downloading that nigga shit illegally off digital drip and shit. Like I was tapped in, bro. Like I was really running it up on the Soldier Boy songs, and like I heard of a lot of people because of him too. Like, nah, he was early on a lot of artists. Yeah. He was always like, working with niggas. I heard early. He had the because of him. Yeah, like he he was on a lot of people early. So yeah, no, nah, definitely always gonna give Soldier Boy his flowers and shit. He he's funny for sure. Uh, Any yeah, he's he's a funny nigga. I appreciate before we even start the interview that we just gave Soldier Boy his flowers because he's very important. So this he thing he deserved it, bro. He deserved a whole four minutes type shit. I feel nah, like. hell yeah! Shout out like, to Soldier Boy. That's how the show was. Mm -hmm. The show exactly. inspired a conversation. Exactly, it was a great show, bro. Top five concerts I've been to for sure. Damn, I should have went went to the one when he came to Atlanta. I knew it. I knew it. I regret it now. That shit was probably crazy. I know yeah, that. I must have been one. nuts. Come on, Atlanta <laughs> concerts are fire. Yeah. That nigga, oh, did get, that nigga did get silly. All right, yeah, yeah. That's a cool no, 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 he did get silly. Nah. Yeah, bro. Did the he did dare. Bates and get silly? They do y'all. Bro, he did. He did everything you think of. Hell yeah, he did y'all. Come on, bro. Yeah. What would it have been without y'all? You know. That's what I'm saying. Damn. Nah, I really gotta go to a Soldier Boy concert because damn, the, I didn't know. Nigga did dunk. He did dunk. Yeah. Shit was fucking crazy when that nigga did dunk. I appreciate when artists know what we want to hear. Like, you ever go to a concert and they're just like, niggas don't know what the fuck his yeah, catalog is. Like, they start playing like random, like, 
they dubstep playing like, they playing and, like shit. Throwaways and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, like, yeah. It happens a lot. It's funny. I do that. It shows a lot myself. I'm not even gonna hold you. Like, I I honestly don't perform any release songs anytime I'm having a show. Like, I mean, yeah, I'd be like, okay, if they popped out for me. Like, sure, they want to hear a release song, but like, I want them to really feel like they're my friends type shit. Like, I want okay. them to see like what I've been experimenting with and see like how they receive it in real time to know if I even should drop it or not type shit. Like. And I usually get really good reception, so like that should be fun, bro. Like all these little TikTok songs and shit, they're not even out. Like, but I be performing them like they're out type shit, and people be knowing the words and shit. It's interesting. I mean, these TikTok records, these 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 Twitter joints. I mean, they're they're catchy because they're good, bro. and they're funny as shit. But they're very good, bro. Thank you so much, bro. That's bro. how I got hit. I got hit because the the kid video, and I was like, yo, this is amazing. Bro, yeah, look at my camera was fire because it was like genuinely a good. Shout song. to Dilla. Yeah, bro, shout out to Jay Dilla and Dilla for real, bro. I don't know. All the Dilla. She, whenever, whenever she walk in here, I'm definitely gonna put her in the camera. But yeah, man, definitely shout out all the Dillas. Yeah, no, I got hip and I was like, yo, this is fantastic. I really, really, I sent this to all the homies and I'm just like, yo, it's fire because he's got ass and he's kind of yeah. he's yo rapping his ass off and this is a beautiful cat. Yeah, bro. I, I had a small kitten before, and I was just I I, I understood the first day with it, it was just like amazing. And that it's song, very pure. <laughs> exactly, that song caught that that feeling. What a pure record! So I got hip, you know, did my research, and I'm just like, oh, this nigga, this nigga's rostrum, like gives me blog era feels. I look into the music; the music's hard. Like I can, I was telling you even like before we started recording, like I can kind of hear the things that influence you, and it's fire because we're around the same age. So like listening. I feel like we were listening to the same shit at the same time. I can hear it in the music, and it just—I don't know—it's such a dope feeling. It's a very yeah. unique feeling. No, definitely, bro. I my like main goal would be like trying to be relatable and shit. Like, I'd be wanting people to know that like rappers and shit are like human. <clears throat> I hate when niggas be acting like too cool and shit. Like, nah, that's important. I feel like I like everything. Like all y'all niggas, like all of, like, everybody you fucking like, I like. Nigga. Like, there ain't really a lot of shit I don't like. For real, other than like fuck niggas and shit, but like music wise, like shit, just be cool, bro. Hell yeah! Now you can hear it in the music. It's a really dope feeling. It's mm -hmm. a really really dope feeling. So I want to thank you for that. Thank That's you for being able to do this. For sure. Got some bro. questions. We gonna we gonna talk a lot of shit. Like this is gonna be this is gonna be a fun one. I can feel it. Pause. For sure. But. <laughs> First, first question that's that's on the docket, just because I gotta ask, because it's part of your name. What is your favorite color? Like, what is your actual favorite color? Actual favorite color. Dun dun dun. Five, four, three. We need a countdown. No, it's um, it's orange. <coughs> I like orange a lot. And the second question was, what made you go with a full sentence as opposed to just naming yourself the actual color? I know the answer, but for those who don't know, where does the name of my favorite color come from? And why is orange your favorite color? Fire right, well, color, by the way. I'm wearing it currently. Oh, yeah. Peep that. All right. Well, there's, like, know. two answers to that question, for real. Because <laughs> uh, I knew I wanted – I always wanted a statement name. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like like Party Next Door, The Weekend, and The Neighborhood, like that type of shit. Like, <laughs> because I love being able to tell when somebody's, like, capping about knowing an artist or not. Like – there's been a lot of times I've like talked to girls or something like, yeah. And I asked them like, yeah, like you hear a party next door. And she's like, oh yeah. Like I love them. Or like, yeah. Like I saw them live. Like, you know what I'm saying? But like, she's, she's speaking as if they're multiple people because she doesn't actually know like, like Tame Impala or something like that. Like I love them. And it's like just Kevin Parker. Like It's really just Kevin Parker. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? So I always wanted a name that like a girl could cap about like to know or like a, oh, nigga yeah. could, a nigga could cap to a girl about to know like i always wanted one of those and the reason why i actually got the name was because um <clears throat> basically whenever i dropped out of school and told my mom that i was going to become a full-time rapper <laughs> she was like okay but you gotta come up with your own style but it's really hard. And I was like, well, yeah, I, I guess that would be hard. But like, I, I wasn't really like thinking, even thinking that deep about it. Like I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna just rap. Like I, I really enjoy rapping. But she ended up like saying this pretty deep cut, cool thing. 
And she was like, coming up with your own style is like coming up with a color you've never seen before. And that shit had me shook because the way she presented it was like, you can't use another color to like help you make that color. You just have to create an entirely different one. That's what coming up with your own style is. And I was like, oh shit, like what the fuck? So one day I was making music and I was like, okay, I feel like I don't really hear shit like this. I never heard shit like this before. I don't see a lot of shit like this. Like, I guess, mm-hmm. this is, I guess this is my favorite color. And then I was like, oh shit, I'm my favorite color. And then, you know, that it just stuck. And now I'm just my favorite color, MFC, fave, trademark. Yo, shout out to your mom for that. Yeah, it's not, it's not. that is wild deep. And yeah. two, it's, that's fire. You, you have like, you, you have a statement name. You, 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 she did it. Man, she named you twice. Yeah, no, shit is crazy. Some cool shit. Dylan, your mom got to get executive producer credits on the album. They write all my music anyway, so you know what I'm saying. They're already, it's already there, bro. Since owning Dilla, would you say the music got better? Is the, is is your cat inspiring just a new yeah, wave of music? That's not even a question, man. Like hundred <laughs> percent. Like in all aspects, each genre has gotten better. Like each experiment that I do, like it's gotten much better because of her existence. She be like sitting in my lap while I record. Like she fuck with recording for real. Like I got her meow on multiple songs. Damn, like, you gotta get you gotta get the drill record with the meow sample. I could do that, honestly. I, it's fucked up because now I think I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna have to write that down. I, we spoke into <laughs> existence. Now I gotta be a thing. Yeah. All right. I'll do it. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. We got no, I'm gonna right, get that done by the end of January. We spoke something beautiful to existence. Video and all. Watch. Yeah, yep, I have proof. Like when when it's like February like twenty third, I'm gonna just put this on the timeline and be like, this nigga lied. I'm gonna be like, bro, it's drop chill is dropping February twenty ninth. <laughs> Let's say some shit like that. I, we act, I think we, we have a leap year this year too. All right, chill is dropping February thirty first. You feel me? You feel me? I was like, I just gotta, I just gotta, you know. Mm-hmm. I gotta make sure get your lives in order. You feel me? Yeah, no, I got you. I appreciate that shit. Not a lot of people do that. They usually just go with them. Nah, bro. If we gonna lie, we gonna lie correct, bro. You feel me? If we gonna they, do the thing, we gonna we gonna do the thing. They go with them and or believe them, but like I don't even lie. I just be joking. There's a big difference. What's the difference? Because like a joke's just for enthusiasm. You know, I'm just mm-hmm. trying to enthuse you. But if I'm lying to you, I'm trying to deceive you. And I feel like that's almost like yin and yang. Like, sure, they're the same whenever it comes to contrast shit, but there's a contrast because they're different. So it's just one of those things. Like, if you go to a comedy show, you're not looking at this comedian like he's lying to you. You're just looking at him like he's doing a bit to make you smile. I'm kind of the same when I'm joking. So, yeah, I don't lie. I just joke to bitches. I mean, to people. (laughs) Yeah, niggas. Two two things to be true. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> you know, so like I feel like this is gonna be all jokes, but like speaking of jokes, I feel like for those who are tapping on like on like the TikToks and the Twitter, like I feel like something you do you use well is your humor. Like mm-hmm. and it's kind of like talking to you, it's like even you saying like I don't lie, I just kinda joke. Like the thing I like about a lot of these records, especially these Dan Schneider records, is like you're dead ass. Like yeah. everything you're presenting isn't a joking matter, but like everything you're saying is dead ass. Like how important is that? Like you show such duality in your music, but it's like it shows all shows you, period. Like in in a way. Yeah, no, I definitely am like self aware and shit, and I know that like whenever I'm funny, I get a lot of like a good amount of reception. Mm-hmm. Um, I also feel like the reason why is because like people don't want to take things too serious right now just because like their real lives are so serious right now there's a lot of fucked up shit happening right now the economy's serious right now everything is just fucked up so everything people genuinely want to smile so i feel like if i deliver serious matters in satire ways i could get the point across really well because people could process it as a joke but then realize it's a good joke because there's truth to it and then realize it's not a joke at all and it's just true so that tends to be what i try to do whenever it comes into music and whenever it just comes to like speaking in general. So, yeah. Nah, that's, that's, a, that's the perfect way to say it. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. And you're absolutely right. I feel like 
there's certain we, we look to music to feel something and like with how serious the world is like feel something good for music is a really great feeling mm-hmm. so the fact that you good. do that in such a good way and i guess like still in a woke way like this damn that shit's real yeah no it's shit is seriously real bro i want i really want something to come out of that like i want i want people to become more aware of the situation and i want like some things that happen out of it so yeah Uh, i'm definitely definitely gonna do whatever i can and like share any links i can to just any type of support for like any victims of him and nickelodeon in general (laughs) shout out to nickelodeon (laughs) i said i said i don't whack yeah fucking he's a nasty dude though no definitely fuck dan schneider is that that gonna be a record we put out into the world nah (laughs) nah i wouldn't do that but it's definitely one that i would like share for free to the world for sure and just hope everybody receives it type shit nah everyone's just i I think everyone's receiving it well i I mean you did a part two because the streets needed it yeah i would because you're raising awareness yeah, I would never want to make no like bread off of that or that. <laughs> like, it's just yeah, I think that's the just wanted that's to the see moment that where uh, yeah. that's where I'm just like losing myself. <laughs> like it's just at that point, I'm not even a real person. Like I'm just like an idea <laughs> with a cape on. That's I think like, that'd be the answer. moment where Dan like responds and like sends people to like the studio, bro. Yeah, niggas gonna hit a Nick- slam by. Should be crazy. I'm a fucking anti-hero. <laughs> nah, you're wild. Yeah, man. Shit be fucked up. So I got a question. Earlier you mentioned that, like, you know, you there's kind of like a battery in your back. Mm-hmm. For, um, and when we were talking offline, I, you, you mentioned that, like, you're, like, officially independent. So you're doing everything at your at your own pace and being able to, like, get your ideas off in real time. Explain, mm-hmm. like not being independent like what's that feel like like cre- creatively where you fit like how are you feeling like what's Man, the uh it i had to like process shit for a second and just like remember exactly like what was making me want to rap in the first place type shit because like it's like within the past couple of years i kind of like forgot like <laughs> i was just trying to make music and just agree with like the whole team no matter what you know and just take all the constructive criticism i could take for certain shit but i felt like i got in a position to take that constructive criticism by kind of like taking my own criticism more seriously like Mm -hmm. believing in myself like i I only got there because i believed in myself and i believed in me and like my ideas so i would say what it what being independent is doing for me now is just like helping me have fun again and helping me really trust like my first instincts without any interruptions or any anything that could you know affect any ideas that i have going on so yeah no it's been really cool the battery that i have in my back is just that i could be like creative as fuck and do random shit it's been hella fun like you know, whenever and you have to clear with anybody, you just yeah, kind of do yeah. it at your own pace. Yeah, like whenever you're signed and shit, you definitely like have that thought in the back of your mind. You know, like you are representing a business, and you know you you should operate you know differently and keep like certain shit in mind consciously and shit. But now I could just like get shit off, like <laughs> and like reply to haters and shit, and just like literally just do whatever the fuck I want. I don't know. I just been wilding. It's been fun. And I mean, since I've been independent, I dropped literally two of the biggest things I ever did. Like, two videos hit over a million in, like, two weeks. So, yeah. It's it's definitely definitely working, bro. It's fun. It's been fun. And it's just so many more ideas that come. Like, I've been editing a lot more videos. I've been fucking making multiple songs a day like it's to a point like i could just have an intrusive thought and make a song about it like i'm like uh that'd be a good hook like fuck it like and then it comes I mean, to a song in real time i mean chicken out a cup like just some random shit you know what i'm saying so yeah no nah, shit comes in real time and i could just like real life just do it whenever i want it's it's like really interesting and fun 
Speaking of intrusive thoughts that turn into a record, mm-hmm. it, it, I'd be it'd, I'd be in, insane not to ask about this because mm-hmm. like we saw in real time like you're able to respond to a hater. Mm-hmm. Some bald person made made a, made a comment to you on Twitter somehow, some way in like an hour you turn into a record, mm-hmm. <laughs> video, yes. all that. So like talk about like having the power to do that and just like is bald yeah. one of those videos that hit a million really quickly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that shit. Hit I knew it. I fucking very, knew it. <laughs> very fast. That was one in a million. Yeah, that and the Dan Schneider one, the bald nigga one, bro. It was just, it was like some right place at the right time. Shit, like it was towards the end of the year. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's gearing up for next year. Everybody's getting ready for like the next big thing. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But this one was so good because it's just so relatable. Like everybody knows a bald nigga that just like is a fucking weirdo, like and just says shit that they don't have to say. And he just happened to be the mascot for that, like, whole document of people. You know what I mean? So I think my problem was, like, he responded to the video of me talking shit to Goldlink. Well, about Goldlink, about Goldlink doing the Mac Miller shit. And he responded, like, you can't look and sound like this nigga and talk shit about somebody actually living out their dreams. And I'm like, bro, that's insane. What the fuck makes him think I'm not actually living out my dreams? So I'm like, bro, I literally like document my life every single day. I have tons of videos of my life. I could literally just make a compilation of this and I could make a song about you because you told me everything I need to know about you in your fucking bio. I read that and I could just tell you're a fucking loser. Like, nah, facts. So, yeah, I'm like, this is going to be fucking easy. So I just go, I go to his YouTube channel. I watch his podcast. I get to know him a little bit and shit. Like, How's the podcast? It's fucking terrible, bro. It's stupid. It's really bad. Like, he's never going <laughs> to succeed in that side of things at all. But yeah, so I'm I'm watching, <laughs> I'm watching this terrible ass podcast. I'm like, man, this dude's like illiterate. He can like barely speak. He He's an idiot. He was just terrible in all aspects when it comes to communications. But I, like, start reading more into him, and he has, like, a production company called Pinecone Island Productions, which is the worst production name ever, in my honest opinion. I think it doesn't even have a ring to it. It's stupid as shit. I don't even want to know the backstory. Yeah, Yeah, it's just bad. But, yeah, I'm reading about it, and it's saying, like, he graduated from Texas, and you know, which is a good school, like, and shit, and... He did this journalism and sports, this and that. And I'm like, man, like it must suck to have done all that and not be succeeding in any of it. And then <laughs> there's this crazy fucking part, bro, because it said he stopped doing all that to focus on music. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's why he's being mean in the comments, like, because he's fucking mad that I'm focused on music and it's working and like his life never worked and he became bald because of it. So processing all that in the span of Yo. Like, processing all that in the span of like five minutes i was like i could just make a song about this i didn't even write it like i just punched in like i'm like yo shut up oh nigga take that weak ass hat off because that hat was weak as hell bro <laughs> <laughs> like, like that shit was, it was a bad fucking hat bro and i'm looking at it like this shit is this Yo. whole this whole nigga is stupid but he's like not even just stupid he's like default stupid like, think of, you're, like, creating a character in a video game, and you didn't give him any attributes yet. Like, you didn't use any <laughs> of your money. Just default. He's just, he's a default nigga from Dallas, bro. Like, he's just <laughs> fucking dumb, bro. <laughs> like, he's, he's just stupid. But, yeah, I don't know. And no disrespect to Dallas. I'm not saying people from Dallas are stupid. I'm just saying he's a stupid nigga not from Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not on the Patrick Star shit. Like, shout out to Texas. Like, I fuck with y'all. But, but yeah, yeah. Man. so after reading over him and just getting to understand his whole game and exactly what he does, I'm like, okay, shut up, ball nigga. Take that weak ass hat off. I'm going to just read down his bio because he presented that to us. You didn't even have to look into that. It's and, the information he gave you. Yeah, and I think the shock value of just being so literal, just literally blatant of responding to a person with a song will definitely impress people, especially within the time I did it. And I'm like, he's an old fuck nigga. So basically, all I have to do is fucking put the boondock shit on this, like where he's on the fuck granddad shit. 
And then it's just going to transition perfectly. Like, people are going to understand exactly what I'm doing. It's like, you can't really talk shit on the song because it would be redundant. Like, you can't call it trash because it's not even... It's so good, you can call it trash. Like, it, it's just an amazing, like, it, it was a really That's good an amazing idea. record. Yeah, it was a really good idea. Like, niggas are playing in clubs out here in L.A. and shit. Like, shit is... For real? Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, it's, it's you some basically, funny. like, back-to-back them. Yeah, no, quite literally, bro. Because after that, I just started, like, bullying this nigga. But I was only bullying him because it's obvious he's a bully. He just, like, talks shit about so much shit. His job is literally to judge. His job is literally to judge people. You're a sports enthusiast. Like, who the fuck are you enthusing for, bro? Like, he, That's he a bar. Says, yeah, you're just talking shit about people. You're focused on other people's lives because you don't got one and shit. Like, fuck VA on VM, bro. Fuck that nigga, bro. I hate, I, I hate that nigga. Bro. I couldn't even say what the podcast is about. I didn't check it out because I was like, nah, he said it's trash. It's, so it's, about, it's about sports, bro. Last thing I heard him talking about was, like, James Harden and how he needs to focus or some shit. I don't know. The Clippers got a winning record right now. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's doing great. Like, shut your dumb ass up. I don't know, bro. And then I'm like, he's I, a sport, I'm, I'm like, he's a sports enthusiast. That's crazy because I'm the nigga kicking it with Russell Westbrook and shit. Like that's wild. Like I'm not even a fucking sports enthusiast. So what talk to did, him. What the fuck did I do better than you, you fuck nigga? So wait, did know. you check out his music? Did we did we find a place where his music? Nowhere went? to be found. I feel like that nigga hid that shit for real because I noticed. I don't know, bro. I be doing research and shit. I be locked in like this. Internet nah, you shit. definitely locked in. This, you remember internet, too. You like yeah. The internet shit is definitely my friend. So like, I caught a glimpse of one of his friends actually talking about the situation to him on Twitter, and um, because like he blocked me and shit. I'm like, nigga, like there's ways around that, homie. Like, don't make no sense, bro. Blocking me is crazy when, yeah. when he started it. Yeah, when you started it, but. Yeah, so basically his friend was like, man, the old Vince I know would have made a rap back to him. And he's like, man, you know I still got that rapper in me, but I ain't about to respond to no nigga I don't even know. And yada, yada, yada. I'm like, nigga, you was the nigga talking about a nigga you don't even know. And that's why you're in this situation. Like, like you, yeah. he found you. Yeah, like, nigga, you was, I didn't know you. Obviously, <laughs> I would never know someone like you. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't have started it. So... Yeah, man. After that, the nigga he he said like, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't respond to something like that. And he was like, he said the most corny shit ever. He was like, I'm like Joe Button. I just sit back and get paid. And I was like, what the fuck? And somebody responded to him like, you bald like that nigga Joe too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe Button's his uh his his influence. He was fucking muse. <laughs> He's fucking muse, bro. You think he went bald to look like Joe Budden? Uh, he probably channeled baldness and went bald to look like that nigga. Like, yeah, I think it, I feel like it was some spiritual shit. It definitely wasn't no bad choice shit. Like, this shit was actually engraved in him spiritually. His aura told him he had to do this for him and his family. Now he did. He does look like one of those like Nintendo me characters, the fall joints. Like when you yeah. talk about like how like he just like Bro, he's not even like can, a real video game character. He's just he like, like a, he's just a me. He's a nigga who would be really easy to draw. Like, you know. <laughs> that nigga looks stupid, man. <laughs> like, niggas who just look dumb, man. I don't know. Yo, so what makes that situation funny is like, that's one of the rare moments where you actually put the song out. Like, you, yeah. it, it became such a phenomenon that you're like, you know what? I gotta, yeah. I gotta put this shit on Spotify. Yeah, nah, cause that, it just felt right at that point. Like, I just, I felt like a lot of people were asking for it type shit. Gosh. And, like, I noticed, like, it's starting to be posted on YouTube from, like, channels that aren't even mine and shit. And, like, somebody. Oh, shit. Someone's probably calling them. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> but, yeah, you somebody, good? Yeah, somebody probably, somebody posted it on Rap Genius and shit. So, like, I kind of just noticed, like, it was, like, already out kind of it's already a thing at this point yeah. yeah so it was like yeah i might as well i shouldn't put this shit out yeah so it it's just crazy to think like me me being like a person on twitter like i talk a lot of shit i, I imagine in my like one comment to like a rapper i just stumbled upon turning into a diss record like that's like that's gonna live with him forever yeah no 100 percent, bro I, i'm sure his friends joke with him about it like like <laughs> and the, 
Like, and the shitty says, part about it is, is, is it's good. Like, yeah, it's, like, it's says, actually very good. If he ever says some stupid shit, like, just be shut up, bro, nigga. Like, <laughs> if he ever has a weak ass hat on, they'll say take that weak ass hat off. Like, if he, he ever tells somebody he's a sports hat. enthusiast, who's he enthusing for? Like, it's crazy. Who is he enthusing for? For the guy, it, it was definitely a good. It was a good show. And you hit a mill, so like he really can't talk to you. Like that's the that another r- great part of the song is just like, yo, I hit a mill last year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it was like my shit, te- my personal shit's even doing good. What's up, Dilla? Dilla. There's Dilla in the house. Nigga, no more. Hold up. Yo, Dilla, look over there, cuz. She don't want to look right now. She's shy. But it's all yeah. good. It, was, it wasn't in the budget we discussed. Yeah, She's no, a good yeah. manager. Yeah, definitely didn't mention her, so. School. I'll catch oh, you later. I got the cameo. Yeah, yeah. She saw it. She it, people gonna know it's her. They gonna feel the aura. They gonna feel the presence. They gonna know that Dylan was in fact here. And we talked about Dylan too. So she she felt we were talking crazy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. She she heard Shout me talking. About, she heard me talking about the fuck nigga. She was like, hold up, what? <laughs> yeah, nah. Like that's her op now. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All my. I can't believe he blocked you. Yeah, bro. Of course he blocked me, bro. He had to, because if he wouldn't have, I would have just kept going. I totally would have blocked him, too. <laughs> I feel like it was a great idea. I'd never, I don't know, that's my problem, bro. Like, I just don't be knowing whenever to stop <laughs> doing shit. Like, that's why people shouldn't start with people, though. Let let this be a lesson to everyone who watches this interview. Don't start with people, because it could potentially turn into some life-changing shit that yeah. turns into a song that's a real digital. <laughs> bro, that nigga helped me out. <laughs> That nigga definitely helped me out. Like he, he got me popping off for real. Like you gonna hit another mill this year because of it. I owe that nigga a lot for real. Like <laughs> I, I think about it. Like my thing, if we ever squash the beef, this is the only way I'll squash the beef with you, Vince. If you're watching, so the only way I'll squash the beef with you, Vince, is if I perform this song at like a festival or something, Rolling Loud or some shit, and okay. you come out with me. Like you on stage with me, turned up, and we both performing it like with our own with each other and shit. That's the only way I'm squashing the beef with Vince. If he if he can't do that, I'm gonna run this bald nigga shit up until he's like fifty. So the only way you can end this beef is basically if you pull the Drake McMill and you just bring him yeah, up to the show. You just gotta squash it at the show, like, cause if not, I'm gonna just run it up till he's fifty, cause he's like. Anywhere between 35 and 40. <laughs> I, I guess he's like 34. 33, 34. You, you thinking 33, 34? Word. I'm All thinking right. 33, 34 for sure. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, You know, he melanin and shit. He could be older. He got the melanin. That's I don't true. Know. I don't know. The we going to find out. Yeah, you heard it here I, first. All I know is I'll squash the beef with him if he pops out at the show with me. And no funny business. Cause my niggas will fuck you up. <laughs> Let them know. Yeah, I just wanted it to be a fun, cordial event. I I think I think it's gonna happen. Roll it loud if you're watching this, which you should be watching this, cause this is real cinema right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, only way we squash the beef, cause you have they have to be involved too. Big festival has to be involved. Coachella is something big. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Like we get this shit in writing. We could get our managers involved. You know, he's a sports enthusiast. I'm sure he has like a whole team working behind him. And- Definitely. <laughs> yeah, so like he he definitely could have his people call him up for sure. Mine are in my bio. Yeah, yo. So um, so May May twenty twenty three, you dropped Car Pack. You know, a double single, two joints, Pink Black and Nissan. Yeah, and yep. uh, what was like? What made you pick those two cars? Two very different cars. Two I feel like explain different things. Explain the the, the title of the project for those who haven't heard it. Kind of paint a picture for them. Yeah, so, like, I felt like Pink Lab was, like, me living out the dream of, like, being a rapper type shit. Mm-hmm. And, like, Nissan was, like, the reality of being an aspiring rapper type shit that, like, a lot of rappers try to hide. Pink Lab was kind of just, like, figurative for, like, you know, you made it. I literally had a pink Cadillac with, like, girls all around me and shit. And it's, like... I'm just living out this idea of what people think being a rapper is every single day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without, you know, I'm just living this life every day without a label budget and and like all this other (laughs) shit that rappers try to make people believe. And yeah, I just felt like Pink Lack was just like the, 
entire epitome of that, like just the fake rapper life shit. And Nissan was like the reality of it, like, oh shit, let me pick you up in my like bad the decent, you know, early two thousands Nissan real quick. Let's go to a drive in movie or something. That's in the budget, homie. Like, let's fuck with that. Definitely and, in the budget. Yeah, and fuck it. Let's go back to the crib. Maybe you'll like fuck with my my little room. Nigga, I got a decent size full size mattress, like type shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just felt like they were the contrast of being a rapper. And, you know, the contrast of, like, what love is and shit. You know, whenever you're a big rapper with cool shit, of course, girls want to be with you. But <clears throat> it could be for the wrong reasons. But whenever you're, like, a rapper with that, you know, fucked up Nissan, the girl who wants to be with you could be the right person. So Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because she with you when you, when you low. Uh-huh. And, like, believes in your ideas and shit and what you're trying to do. So. What are... What are some realities of being a rapper, especially not in, in today's day and age where, like, you kind of have to put out a lot of content all the time? Like, I feel like something you do well with is capitalizing on every time you have a big moment. It's like a video just, like, right before we got on our, our call, you just dropped the video. And it's like, yeah. I feel like being a fan of you is dope because you're really consistent in today's day and age. But, like, talk about the reality of that, having to edit all the time, having to come up with these ideas, having to... Yeah. Like, what is the reality of being a rapper in 2024, especially <laughs> sure. independent one? I feel like the reality is, like, the consistency, like, really matters. Like, that, mm -hmm. mysterious, that mysterious shit is fucking dead. Like, if niggas think they popping off, like, with they, like, one picture a year shit, and they fucking black and white silhouettes that they post every fucking two months or some shit, like, Nah, bro. It's different now. Like, I feel like the audience really want to, like, know these niggas. They, like, mm -hmm. want to trust these niggas. Like, because a lot of these rappers are crazy, bro. Like, niggas are bad people. <laughs> like, type shit. Nah, so, I, I, I all the way yeah. believe it. Yeah, so, like, people want to actually, like, get to know artists now. And, like, they're consumers, so they actually want to, like, consume you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I feel like consistency is definitely key whenever it comes to that. And, um, like, for me, man, watch out, Dilla. But, like, for, <laughs> for me, the way that I usually go about it is, like, literally, like, your entire life is, it could be content. Like, <laughs> only thing that makes something content is that it's being recorded. So, it's hella easy to just sit back with your niggas who you're already funny as hell with every day and just record it. Next thing you know, you post that shit on TikTok. It goes viral. And now you got niggas in your email talking about they want to send you free candy and shit. Like, I don't know, bro. <laughs> like, this shit is hella easy if you make it easy. It's only hard whenever you're, like, That's real. Up, like, trying to, like, okay, I'm going to do this on Wednesday. And blah, 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 blah. It's like, nigga, like, just fucking just be you on the internet. And I feel like if it's supposed to work, it would definitely work type shit. And I think if rappers, advice. if rappers have a problem with how consistent they got to be, then it's like might not be the sport for them, for real, in my opinion. So that's that's a valid that's a valid way to look at it. I mean, and you we're witnessing it with you in real time. If you put up some shit and it goes well, making a record, yeah, bro, you know, and it's like even it's, it, it's like even if it doesn't go well, you just gotta keep going until it goes well again. Cause like it's never gonna go well forever until like it goes well enough times. Like, so you just gotta keep trying and not be discouraged when certain shit don't work. Cause like certain shit don't work all the time. And I feel like a lot of times like certain shit only don't work because like people don't see it. Like sure indeed. Like people just didn't hear you yet. So like once that thing that you did does work, people will even go back. And maybe, like, that shit that didn't work, they'll, like, run that shit up. Like, they're going to repost your shit from, like, seven months ago and shit. So, I don't know. I feel like a lot of times people just need different attitudes towards shit for it to work out a little bit. Because, like, of course my life is hard and, of course, like, bad shit happens. But I do love music and I do love, like, what I do creatively. Like, that's the reason why I'm here. So, I'm like, I might as mm -hmm. well share it to the world and shit, especially if it makes people happy. So. Nah, definitely.
I, it definitely does. I mean, it makes people smile. It makes people laugh. You get people roasted <laughs> in unison. It's it's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Let's um, let's talk about your last project, Velma. Mm-hmm. Came out twenty twenty. Yeah. Talk about just kind of creating that through the pandemic. What that yeah. project did for you, and kind of why it's been. You know, it's we're about it's supposed to be four years without like a new full length project. Talk about like what that's looking like and like kind of what what why the gap for sure um so velma it's like super deep because i had that album done since like the end of 2018 oh damn in the 2018 early 2019 so like that album is what got me sent to russia like it was done before i even got signed type shit so basically when you, what do you mean by that like it's the it's the album that got you sound like they heard it and they were like oh yeah they heard it album. like before it was out it was like oh, fuck with got it. you can we yeah. take it back a second actually how ex- explain like the roster relationship how that came about for for those who don't know oh yeah and then sure. let, let's sure. let's do the whole story for sure so like uh basically rostrum is like a pittsburgh founded record label <laughs> mm-hmm. and um i Whenever I first started making music, I was living in Pittsburgh, and um, I popped off pretty quick around the city, and they took notice of me pretty early. And Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically, after they took interest to me, I ended up moving to LA. They also moved to LA, so it just like made a lot Perfect of sense. Timing. Yeah, so um, the way that they like discovered me, discovered me was um quentin interview q uh he was like matt miller's homie and shit so he was really really close well not even his homie like max best friend like he was really his dog yeah and was really close to the whole rostrum situation like for max entirety with them so basically he heard velma because he asked me about it and he asked me to pull up to his house. My bad, I'm like stumbling. I'm pretty high. But no, <laughs> you're good, bro. Do your thing for sure. But he asked me to pull up to his house, and um, I ended up pulling up on him and showed him the album and shit. And he was like, "Okay, like, what do you want to do next?" And I was like, "I don't know. I feel like I need a manager." And he was like, "Motherfucker, I'm right here." So then he started managing me. And, oh shit. Uh, yeah, and by him having like a dope relationship with Benji, Benji Grimberg, um, he showed him my album and he loved it. And we ended up meeting in LA and the rest was history. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, shit was, shit was fun, bro. Like the first day I got signed, we went to um, me, Benji, and Q. We went to Trejo's Tacos and Danny Trejo was there. And he just like sat at the table with us and just like oh, shit. I don't it was so random. I got picture proof too. It could definitely happen. But yeah, it was it was really fun. I'm gonna need the picture to put into the interview when you when you say that. Yeah, that's, I'll, send it, I'll send it to you. I need that. But nah, that's crazy. Like and reason I asked that, so I understand where you are now. You have to understand the whole story. So thank you for saying the roster records story with us. That's fire. For sure. And it's to be and yeah, for like for all the blogger niggas, like that's a dream label to be a part of. Like so much, so much legendary things have come out of that. So to be a part of that family tree is fire, mm-hmm. bro. Yeah. So, so now we take it to Velma. So they they hear they hear Velma. You put it out. You're officially signed. Talk talk about like just like the stages of putting that album out. Kind of like the, the highs, the lows, and now like looking forward to like what new music looks like. What what can we be looking forward to project wise? Mm. I I start with the highs, so I say the highs are that like it was my like debut type mm-hmm. shit. So it was the first thing people were actually able to like like take in of me, and you know like the first thing that actually allowed people to take me seriously and make them know that like I really really was a rapper. Like this wasn't some like. I'm dropping out, I'm making a SoundCloud shit. Like, this is yeah. like, you know, like, I'm really like a special artist and I could really do this shit all my life. Shit. So, that was the highs. And working on it was high too, like, at the time. Because, um, <coughs> who I was, I probably have COVID. I don't know. 
but who I work. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't, bro. We have parties and shit. I need to get my shit together. But basically, um, who I was working on with was um this group. They're called One Eight Hundred, and um, it consisted of Cody Maymo, Don Pomp, and Jeremy Rossinger. So it was fun because they were like the first people who like helped me make music like ever. Oh shit! Sure, okay. You know what I mean? Like I, I started making music in twenty eighteen, so they were the first people who actually like helped me like get a sound down and like understand the recording process better and shit like all i really had was like raw talent to like actually write music and freestyle and shit but they like helped yeah. me throughout the other shit but you know through that process and through signing and shit you know like egos clashed and a lot of shit went wrong like between me and them so <laughs> yeah you were not like close anymore at all so that's like a pretty low of it but I feel like it was, like, something necessary for all of us because it's still, like, a memory we'll always have and I'll always be proud of, like, with, like, mm-hmm. a bittersweet purpose. But, like, I feel like the sweetness, like, means a lot more than the bitterness. And um, me and that's Jeremy, right. me and Jeremy so hella close, though. That's the homie. We be kicking in the shit. He live in L.A. That's my dog. But, yeah. Um, and another low I would say is uh, it may – people only take me serious like it almost made people try to put me in like a box of like a depressed ass rapper like i, I don't be mm. so i think my goal with this whole little rebrand was just showing people this like other side of me which is 100 percent genuinely me too and just like letting people know that like i'm multifaceted and i don't want to like be boxed in the way that all these fucking new rappers do get boxed in so early and it's like yeah. not fair to their careers at all. I don't want my career to not be fair before it even gets to where I want it to be. So yeah, that'd be the goal for real. But that's definitely still in me. I could really rap and shit. And the goal is to, you know, have this contrast and find the best way possible to like combine both sub genres and make it make the most sense for the consumers and myself. And do you feel like that's like one of the toughest parts of the journey, kind of founding that like yeah <clears throat> that middle and everything? So something Definitely. something to that appeals to all your fans and still Definitely. makes sense. It still sonically sounds good too. Hundred percent. That's why I just I really be focused on trying to like really nail the sounds I'm going for because like mm-hmm. you really nail it, no matter how dumb it is, no matter how good it is, like people could respect it. Like, you don't even gotta like it. You could just at least respect it as a real, like, crafted idea. So, yeah, that'd be my goal. Just, but it is really hard trying to, like, focus on one thing. When it, Well, focus on multiple things when you see one thing really working. Like, yeah, whenever, whenever one sound is really working, you're like, oh, shit, let me try to capitalize off of that and, like, recreate that in a different way. But, you know, I had to, like, slap myself and remember, like, no, nah, I don't want to be in a box and shit. So I got to show people I can True. do more and shit. So, yeah, that's why. Like, today I put out, like, some shit where my voice is, like, high-pitched and shit. Like, I don't know. I'm just trying to try out ideas and just keep going. I, I think the beautiful part of where you are right now is the fact that you do get to try a lot of stuff. So it's, like. You're, you're with the with the rate that you're dropping and the quality. It's like you can try all these new things and see what sticks, see what do, what doesn't. You kind of get to test it in real time, mm-hmm. and it's coming off of like a pretty big year for you. So it's like yeah. a, a lot of artists don't really have that luxury. I feel like so that's a beautiful place to be. I feel like mm-hmm. I agree, hundred percent. So like it's gonna be exciting, just kind of seeing like where it takes you and like what future music looks like. Because I feel like with every drop, everything does sound like. A little different, but it's showing like a different style, so that's fire. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I feel like um like this year is gonna be like a really solid like foundation. Low like foundational year for me. Like I think I'm gonna be able to like prove exactly like who I am type shit and like who I wanted to be the whole time. What is what is something that from the, the takeaway from this conversation, what is something you do want people to, like knowing about you like coming into this year? Like what's something that Yeah, like what is something you want to prove to everyone? 
if mm. there is anything at all or re- maybe even prove to yourself uh, i definitely want to prove i'm not even gonna lie not the two mile horn or anything but i feel like i'm capable of being like one of the best content creators of 2024 i really feel like i could do it because as of recently i've been having like ideas that like remind me of like how Adult Swim made me feel, like, if I was up too late and shit. And I know those were really good ideas. <laughs> so, oh, like, yeah. yeah, so, no, I, I just want people to know that I'm a lot more than the first video you see of me type shit. And I don't want people to box me in because I just got hella ideas that I feel like we could all enjoy and if mm-hmm. you give me a chance type shit. And, yeah, I, I got something for everybody. And... I'm just excited to present that shit in the way I want to. And I, I, I we're ex- I'm excited to see it. No bullshit. I'm excited to see like where this year takes you, like all the music we're gonna get, all the future content we're gonna get. Cause I feel like feel like you're striking gold right now. I feel like every like I say it all the time on Twitter, I'm like, these niggas just don't miss. Like I don't understand. Bro, I appreciate you for real, man. You gotta repost my my new one today. <laughs> I got you, bro. I was literally about to repost it, and you got on. You're like, you, I'm watching his video, and he texted me, and you're like, oh shit, you're on camera. Oh yeah, hell oh, yeah. No, of course, I'm, I'm gonna repost all of them. I'm a fan, bro. The shit's the shit's fire, and the music's very good too. That's that's always a fulfilling feeling when you find some shit on the internet that you genuinely like. You're like, I'm gonna follow them to this. I'm gonna subscribe to this, and then you listen to the music, and the music's actually really good. Oh yeah, bro. For sure, I appreciate that shit. Nah, of course, Brody. Of course, it's 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 a real thing. Like I, I genuinely fuck with it. Mm. I genuinely fuck with it. I'm really excited to see where this year goes. I'm excited to see, just kind of like what the music gonna sound like now, knowing that you want to be like the goal is to be one of the best content creators. I'm excited to see how dope the content keeps getting. Yeah, bro. Quite, living in LA, like, what's the? Because you know you were living in Pittsburgh, you started making music there. How does living in LA, like, like uh, um? influence the music and influence the concert as well because you're always just around so much dope shit yeah um i feel like uh it gets to a point where you like even become like numb to the dope shit around so Mm. that's like low-key a good thing because it's like you kind of just like become the dope shit around for real just like Mm. and um i i just don't really even overthink it like of course like the weather's nice and shit but Mm. I was also like always influenced by LA culture, LA music. I was originally born out here, type shit. And you know, my mom just put me on a hell of shit growing up. Like my cousins. That's hard. Music, so yeah, so yeah, no, LA has just always been a part of me. Like it's just literally like tatted on me, type shit. Oh shit. Yeah, definitely. It's you for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nah, yeah. Just LA is just part of me for real. And, all, all the homies who are from LA, all the transplants out here too, like everybody, everybody in my foundation is solid at least. Like I know there's a lot of fake niggas, but there ain't like none of them around me. So oh yeah, yeah, it should be, yeah, for sure. I have a question about a record off Elma. If that's cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So on funeral, you go into detail about like what your funeral would be like. How did that idea come about? And like. How was it weird recording something like that? Man, during that time, like I was like so depressed that like nothing could even be weird to me. Like whenever it came to like morality and shit, like gotcha. it was like to the point where like I was like visualizing that shit. Like I could like literally close my eyes and just like really visualize it. So yeah. I was like, I might as well write about it. I feel like you know everybody is really afraid of death and scared to talk about it even though it's like the only inevitable thing in the world so i um yeah i think i was just able to touch on it in like a really like you know like understanding way in a really detailed way and like paint an important picture with it at that time for myself and the reception it got a lot of people said it has helped them and shit so that's that must be a beautiful feeling yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like it definitely served <laughs> the purpose I was trying to serve. And I, I remember a little bit earlier into, into like the interview, you mentioned like you kind of didn't want to be boxed in and just do a specific music about that. Like mm-hmm. how how does it feel to be in a place where like you're probably not, you're probably, you know, you're at like to write music like that, you have to be, I would say that you would have had to have been depressed, like kind of years removed from that how's it feel to be in a place where you can make music that's gonna touch people in a very different way um i definitely i definitely still begin like the feel the feelings and shit of depression i think just <clears throat> just like inevitably like getting older and shit like i just learned how to 
I learned how to deal with it a lot differently. And, you know, I learned how to process it a lot better and more healthy and shit. So I think now I'm able to like write from perspectives of how I want to feel or like mm -hmm. how I'm manifesting I'm about to feel or like how I want y'all to feel or how my nigga up the street feeling right now type shit. Like, so yeah, I think I've just gotten a lot better at like presenting shit from like different perspectives, even if oh, I'm yeah. not that way in the moment. And I think that just comes with becoming a better songwriter type shit. And how important is it to like be able to express just your feelings when you're going through these depressed, like we all get depressed, we all get super sad. And it's like to find positive ways to cope with it. Like how important has it been for you to find that and be able to express it and with with us and your fans, like your fan, like you said earlier, like uh, funeral kind of helped a lot of people like that. That must be a dope thing too. You took your sad feelings and created something beautiful that people can relate to. No, a hundred percent, bro. Like fucking, I think my favorite, my favorite part about any like artistry is being able to express like your most pain, like through the people like who are consuming it type shit. Like I, it, it makes me feel really connected with people. It mm -hmm. makes me feel very loved by people. It makes me like have love for people. I I didn't even like touch on it type shit. I didn't post about it at all really. But my brother, he fucking killed himself like a month and a half ago type shit. And, um, yeah, I'm so sorry for your loss, bro. Appreciate you, G, for real. So he fucking killed himself type shit. And I was in a really, really bad place. But like it it didn't like make me like sit down and not want to do anything it like more so made me want to like do everything like it like put this insane battery in my back that i was like bro i gotta get every fucking idea off like he would call me all the time like when he was in jail and shit just saying like my music he would play for people and shit mm. my brother and shit like you know, just like genuinely just proud of me for doing something. Like I'm not the biggest rapper by any regard, but like he's just proud that I'm even chasing a dream type shit. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna keep chasing this dream and just go crazy no matter what. And nobody's gonna fucking stop me and I'm gonna make it happen. And um, I uh, had a show and I was performing. And on my last song, I said something about him. Like, I forget the line. I can't even process it right now, but I said mm -hmm. something like in reference to my brother type shit and um like i just like was like bro stop the beat like i don't know what it was like something just clicked in my head and then i just started like going into just detail about like how he just passed away and shit and how i haven't told anybody and how sad it made me and how how i don't even like really know how to process it and i don't even know how my dad could feel type shit and just like all this, how, how yeah. do you process something like that? That's that's it's major. Exactly. So yeah, it was just it was just like a lot. And I I just like started breaking down, crying, and like the whole cr the crowd just like ran on stage and started hugging me, type shit. And, Man, yeah. shout out to the, shout out to them for doing that and just you being able to share that with them. That's beautiful. Not for real, bro. Like I I feel like that's like what shit's all about for real. Like, that like I feel like that was my best show I ever had for real. So, yeah, shit was cool, and nah, and I feel like I feel like even being able to like let go in that type of way is like literally the reason why I make music, for real. Yeah, my my shit just tweaked the fuck out. Sorry, I, I use this frozen a little. It's cool. I was just talking to like I was talking to a pause version. Of Okay, but like I heard, I promise you, I heard everything, and <coughs> I just want to thank you for sharing that with us, for real, man. And for sure, bro. I we, I, I I'll speak for everyone. Like the fact that you're able to just still share these moments with us is amazing, and like mental health is real. So thank you for speaking on that, for real. Oh yeah, oh yeah, bro. For sure, anytime. Nah, man, but super sorry for a loss, for real. like. I gotta like say that. No, of course, bro. If you need anything at all, let me know, bro. We we all like right. super locked in now. Oh yeah, bro. Definitely, man. You're like one of the first people I talk to about it. I appreciate you. <laughs> no, nah, of course, Brody. I'm always I'm always gonna be here to listen. This is what the kicking it like this is what kicking it's about, just being able to talk with the homies and just get your shit off for real. Mm -hmm. For sure. Agreed. Man, this is this this interview has had like so many different emotions. We were roasting a nigga for 20 minutes. 
Shit got real. That's real that's multi that's... multifaceted, bro. I be trying to tell these niggas, man. Nah, but they they go they gonna find out this year, bro. They gonna know. They gonna know. Yeah. You coming for everything, bro. They, I I promise I am. Like my my like attitude is literally like that little devil face emoji. I've been posting that shit so much, bro. I can't stop posting it. It's my favorite fucking emoji. We gotta you gotta turn it to merch somehow. Yeah, nah, I might, well, bro. Well, nah, Apple don't sue my nigga though. Yeah, nah, I don't even fuck with the emoji merch. That shit's weird. That shit's so tacky, bro. Like, you ever you seen have, you the whole you, emoji sweatsuit? That should be crazy. That They're was a nasty niggas. time. Yeah, you can't trust any of them niggas, man. They'd have that on with, like, white forces. And sometimes Tim's. Yeah. That man. was, like, the Cookie Monster uh, energy. When niggas was wearing the Cookie Monster, like, all the, like, the full merch with that with the matching hat. That's that same yeah. energy. No, nah, that was bad. Nah, I ain't like that at all. Niggas who wear shit like that, you just know they're gonna stab you randomly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, can't. you can just you can you can just feel you can just feel it. You can just feel that they might do some nasty shit around you. They might rob you. Mm-hmm. Might rob rob your iPad out your iPad. You ever got your iPod stolen in middle school? I was a nigga stealing them. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I would uh I fuck with that. That's duality. Me and my homie would steal the iPod touches and um we jailbreak them and sell them back to niggas. But sell them back to niggas is nuts. We just go about it like we hear we heard your iPod Touch got stolen. We got these jailbroken ones that are even better than the one that got stolen. You want one? And they say, yeah. And next thing you know, we come up like a good like $80. That's a yeah. come up though. $80 iPod? I mean, it's free too because we stole it. So it's a, it's just $80. <laughs> and we're taking so many. So. so so you one of those niggas that would have stole my iPod and helped me look for it? I wanted to help you look for it. I would okay, have already been gone. <laughs> like you would have I, I, I respect off it. Off the premise, yeah. For sure. I, I, I would, at least you're not helping niggas look for that. I would have hoped you found it. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I would have get I would have told you some shit like that. Like good luck finding it. Nah. Shoplifting shoplifting your name's for real, bro. <laughs> I forgot I even had that down. Yeah, you? no, that's that's <laughs> you absolutely do. Shoplifter and Fear Factor episode 33, season four winner. Yeah, that's about right. Yep. Shout out to Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, just for Fear Factor. Big ups not... to Joe Rogan. Yeah. Big ups. <laughs> big ups. Big ups. I'll do that. <laughs> big ups to Joe Rogan. Shout out to Joe Rogan. No hate to yeah. Joe Rogan. Neutral, neutral Joe Rogan. Like, okay. Neutral. Okay. Yeah, neutral situations. Yeah, Man, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan, if you happen to watch this, uh, come do an episode, bro. Yeah, do an episode. No hate, bro. What if, like, if he invites you to the podcast tomorrow, you got to do it, though, right? Yeah, of course. What the fuck? That's a given, <laughs> I bet. So, yeah, neutral of, the, neutral of the Joe Rogan. Yeah, I saw I saw a Joe Rogan podcast episodes I like. I saw ones I didn't like type shit. I mean, it's definitely, like, a successful, like, good podcast. Right? I think it's, like, the biggest one in the world is some shit. Yeah, like he was the first nigga I heard of who even had a podcast. So. He, he invented the podcast. Yeah, and he was like another one of them people who went down like multiple avenues and shit. So you got to respect that. He's like the soldier boy for white people. First to do a lot of shit. Yeah, I'm going to come back with some, but I'll give you it for now. <laughs> for, just for now. This he's is not, perfect. I'm not, he's not young enough to count. True. Yeah, it would have. It would have had to have been a person as young as Soulja Boy at the time. I was gonna say Justin Bieber, but Justin Bieber got a lot bigger. So maybe like Logan Paul. He a wrestler now too. I feel like it would be Jake Paul before Logan. True. One of the Paul brothers. Yeah, it's probably Jake Paul. Jake Paul is probably the Soulja Boy of white people. Probably. I'm saying probably. Most Jake Paul is most likely the soldier boy of white people. I can fuck with that. Yeah. I can yeah, fuck with that. I'll give him that. Because he's very he's very kid oriented at first. Took a super turn to prove that he wasn't kid oriented anymore and started doing something completely different from what he started doing. Yeah. And has influence positive and negative on the world. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, you got it. We got it. We figured it out. Great dudes, man. I fuck with them niggas, man. No, nah, hell yeah. I watch hella wrestling, so I fuck, he be, I fuck that with nigga Logan. Paul be laying niggas out. <laughs> nah, he's out, bro. He's he knocking niggas the fuck out, bro. 
It doesn't make sense how talented they are, bro. That shit don't even make no fucking sense, bro. He be laying nigga shit. They, <clears throat> they be saying he can't box no boxers. I don't know. That nigga catch you with that hook. He fucking lay you the fuck out. I don't know. He knocking niggas out. He might. He he might be able to go ahead with like a, a like an okay boxer. That's what I'm saying, bro. And it'll be entertaining as fuck. And that's really all that matters at the end of the mm-hmm. day. Exactly. I like how he wears the mismatched shoes. I think that's pretty cool. Like I like to have that his thing and shit. That shit is cool. I I never even noticed that. I'm gonna look into it now. I be peeping at everything when it comes to boxing, bro. I fuck with boxing. Who's your favorite boxer before you get we get off? Pause. Uh, probably Tank. Yeah, I fuck with Tank. I just I fuck with his swag and shit. I fuck with him. Um, yeah, I fuck with how he had on some human made shit, whooping around Garcia's ass. I thought that was cool. Yeah, probably probably Tank. He reminded me of like Floyd. Whenever he was younger and shit. Yeah, he's like the closest thing we get in like. Yeah, and I just mean. Just be, I mean, fighting wise too. I don't know the nigga personally or nothing like that. Yeah. I, yeah, I think he. I think he's a good ass boxer. Hell yeah! I learned a lot about my favorite color today. Mm-hmm. For sure, bro. A lot of a lot of duality in this conversation. I want to thank you for doing this, kicking it, bro. It's been a long time coming, low key. I definitely. Mm-hmm. I definitely gonna keep up with you. I'm gonna second I get off this, I'm gonna go re- retweet the video. Promise you, I share it. Bet that, bro. Bet that. Appreciate it. But, but keep going crazy, bro. Thank you for doing this. I'm excited yeah. to see what this year has for you, and I know it's gonna. I know. I know you're gonna put us a lot of fire shit. So. Oh yeah, bro. That's the plan. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. Nah, of course, bro. Let's do this again sometime. Oh yeah, G. Sounds good, G. Have a good one. I'll catch you, bro.